Hello there, and welcome to another start of the video. This is part three of the um, Spacers uh, faction kind of ship overhaul. Uh, last two episodes, we looked at some A-class vessels that Noel Groth has put together. And now we've kind of moved over to the B-class. And this is, the, I said last time, this is my favorite ship he's built so far. And it, it is the, when I seen it initially, I hadn't like read the full lore. And, and I remember saying to him, it looks like the sort of ship that was like being produced on his shipyard. And like the spacers just were like, it's not done, but we're stealing it. And then Nogoth's like, that's exactly the idea. And I was like, that's really cool. That's kind of why with the aesthetic and stuff, which I'll let Nogoth kind of explain it. Nogoth, if you want to kind of, kind of give the brief synopsis of this vessel. Oh uh, yeah, uh, as Crimson just said, the, the ship was under construction. The Orozco's Raiders Spacer Faction raided the the, spa uh, the construction station and stalled the ship. And uh, they took it back to their own home base and started retrofitting it with these Nova Galactic parts to get it into a functional ship. And uh, it's it's still a work in progress. And it's, translates it's primarily a tile vessel, I just want to add, isn't it? That's what, like, it was initially a tile vessel that was being built. Yeah, but... The shipyard was Tayo, and um, if I were to ever build a completed version of this as it was intended to come off the, the, the rack, it would be Tayo parts. Okay. Which, and you'd see a lot I, less Nova Galactic in there. Uh, well, obviously, you've uh, if, if any of you guys are checking out his blog or even the Discord, which you should check out both, he's always building, he loves building. But I know you don't like Tayo, but I would love to see what the finished product would be at some point because... Most Tayo ships kind of look a bit, you know, meh. And this one actually looks very interesting. Like, just the layout so far. Well, that might happen. Uh, it's, er it's certainly on, on the, the consideration block. We'll, we'll go there. All right, so let's we'll take a look at some of the stats first. So we've got a fuel of 420. We've got a hull of uh, 1256. Uh, and the cargo space of 4020. Um, I will say there's uh, quite a lot of hull here. Now, when you were making this, obviously, it wasn't... Well, I'm assuming it wasn't based off a specific ship. You kind of slung it together yourself, didn't you? Yes. Okay, and that being said, whereas the other ones, the A-classes, were kind of, you know, you were starter ships, this one, I'm assuming it's going to require you to have some kind of higher-end perks. Would I be right in saying that? Uh, yeah. I mean, just looking at the reactor, you're going to have to have ship design 4 and piloting 3. Yeah, just from that alone. Which there's obviously there's nothing wrong with that. Like if you if you were looking for like the spacer kind of faction ships, both ships we covered in the previous videos they fit perfectly starships. But if you're looking for a kind of a upgrade, this is a perfect ship because, like Nogroth was saying, the spacers have obviously kind of added the 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 um the hope tech or not the hope tech the uh, Nova Galactic pieces, but you could easily pull them out and swap swap them in with Stroud Eklund or Deimos or even Tayo. But yeah, so uh, stat-wise, got a B-class reactor, 39 power. Really good, I believe. That is the highest reactor in the game for B, isn't it? 39? That's correct. Perfect, okay. It's nice to have someone here who I can confirm with. A lot of times in my reviews, I'm like, I think that's correct, but I'm not sure. Someone will yell at me in the comments. Crew of 5, uh, jump range of 23 light years, shields of 1125. It's only got particle... No, no, it's got two sets of parts. That's weird. I've never seen them laid out like that. They're like a gap. Uh, it's got um, particle weapons uh, and particle turrets. So it's got two particle uh, fixed particle weapons there on the front section. And it's got two turrets on the back, which I'm a huge fan of turrets. Um, so, yeah, so let's... Uh, oh, if you want to if you want to build it, sorry. Um, sorry I, was, uh, I was just uh, kind of lost in, in just looking at the ship because it's such a cool ship. It's kind of like when I see all the kind of the Nova Galactic, um, like the pieces and stuff and the bracers, I'm like, I'd put like a an armory there. I'd put like a an all-in-one berth there. But if you do plan on building this ship, uh, it will cost you probably like 350k. And obviously, like Noel Ruff was saying, you'll have to have some kind of higher end perks. But yeah, let's go and uh, let's go take a look at it. Now, one thing I, I, I probably should have said is this is kind of, you were, uh, if you want to give a bit of lore, because you were talking to me before about it, but this is primarily meant to be like a training vessel and a, a cargo vessel, yeah? That is correct. So this if you want to... where they train the new recruits and where they make uh, supply runs, the places like the den. I, in my, my headspace, there's a lot more space stations that they could, you know, dock at and trade for, you know, supplies, medical supplies, food, that kind of thing. 
And that's what this ship mostly does. And I, I do it's like almost that. Like that. It like the um, the idea of like because the whole kind of the, the the reason these kind of videos came about is we've been like talking for a while about like the different factions and stuff. And Nolgroth kind of made a point in the Discord about how like he didn't like how the spacers like were all uniform and his like faction, which I would definitely recommend checking out the blog because we we go over a lot of the lore here, but there's there's a lot more to it on his blog. But the idea behind his kind of their own like little faction and stuff, it's it's cool to imagine like there's some spacers out there that aren't complete cutthroats, you know, like they will actively recruit and train their members because they want them to be efficient. So in we go to the entryway. We've got a little Nova. Ooh, we got some med packs. What's that? Oh, fire extinguisher. <laughs> okay. So in we go. And um, in building this, uh, I'm trying to remember, is this is, is this ship quite maze-like, or are we good? You know, I don't remember it being particularly maze-like, but it's not as clean as some of my smaller ships, of course. Which that is kind of one of the, um, when it comes to bigger ships, unless you make use of the little kind of merge techniques to uh, prevent ladder spawning, which can be tedious, kind of the larger ships you get, they, they get a bit uh, kind of long. But anyway... So we've got a, this is a, it's a Tayo engineering room, I'm assuming, or is it a Nova Galactic? Um, I would have to look at the build, but just I believe check. it's Nova Galactic. Uh, oh, it's hidden. Is it? Yeah, it's a Nova Galactic. Okay, interesting. I like, I will say, I was assuming it was Nova Galactic because they're one of the only manufacturers where they have these kind of like, um, these kind of chain link fences, which I really, really like. And then, like with the uh, like with the kind of the, the idea of the spacers, like spacers can't exactly you know land on New Atlantis and like be like, can you fix up my ship? So they would always need to make sure you know that they have the engine room so they can keep keep an eye on everything. And then if we head, was it, did I miss a door? Yeah, you did. I did miss a door. Okay, ha! This is why why it's good. No, someone here watching. So we have a door here, and then we have an infirmary, which is quite nice to see. It, uh, it's, I feel like a lot of, like, if, if the UC were to ever, like, stumble across this ship, just looking at it from the interior, they're probably like, this isn't spacers. Spacers wouldn't, like, care about their crew. Is that? Oh, I, I never noticed those, um, those, uh, decals before. Anyway, sorry, I'm getting carried away. And then, um, we'll drop down first. We have a, is this a living quarters? I think this is a living quarters. It's either living quarters or all in one B. It might be the B, actually, yeah. It's not the A because there's no digipick sitting there. And then we've got bathroom space, which is quite nice. We've got some storage lockers. And if we head back up, oh, I have a. I forgot I'm wearing a, a, a different jump pack. Then up here we have a. Um, have a. I want to say this is a storage room, not a companionway, just because there's some stuff all about. When we do the teardown, we'll obviously we'll know for, for exact. And then this is uh, this is the all in one A, just because there's there's normally a digi pick there. So there's a lot of the, there's clearly a lot of kind of crew space. Like in game, you know, the crew is kind of limited to a certain amount. But like from in your lore point of view, like how ma how much crew do you think this ship would kind of have in one go? Oh, it would have a lot, I, and I wouldn't want to throw a number out, but it would have a lot of crew because again, it's the training vessel. It's designed to. to take a, a new crew out on a you know shakedown kind of bruise and show them which way's aft and which way's or port yeah. and starboard you know so that they know what they're doing which is ironic because like i feel like there's probably a lot of like uc recruits and like freestyle recruits that probably didn't get that sort of training they were just kind of thrown in the deep end and then we have we have oh. a captain's quarters here uh, this is this is tayo i believe this is um, accurate, or this was on the ship originally, which I'm I'm right. guessing like the captain of the ship was quite happy that this was here, just because you know, Nova Galactic is nice, but uh, I'm assuming Tayo there's probably a lot more worth to it, and then we've got the docking port up there, and then if we go, just try and double check, uh, let me know if I if I've missed anything. I know I'm gonna have to drop back down. I didn't see you missing anything, so. The bridge is okay. Back down. Down we go. Here we have 
Where is the bridge? I might have lost it. You need to go back out into the... Uh, the engineering room? That way. Go back out that door there. Oh. And then I believe there are... Oh, yeah. Here we go. Perfect. Off we go. And then we have a, another one-by-one one storage room, I think. Could be a companionway, but we'll know in a minute. And then up on the top here, we have crew control station, which is where you're kind of, you know, you'd have your, like he's saying, it's where you'd have you kind of your trainee crew kind of shadowing your, your actual crews. And then we have another Nova Galactic Bridge. I really like this one from a interior point of view. Not a huge fan of it exterior. It kind of reminds me of like a hamster when hamsters have kind of like chubby cheeks. But uh, we've got the pilot seat, co-pilot, and the navigator, or whatever you want to call it. Uh, I will say, um, with Nova Galactic, like, interior, like this bridge, again, it, it kind of fits the spacer theme, because, like, there's, like, you know, it's not, like, super flush and, you know, like, protected, like, you've got these, like, pipes kind of hanging everywhere. Was was that kind of intentional, like, when you were building this, had you intended on using this sort of bridge from the get-go, or was it kind of a last-minute thing? I was torn between this one and the actual Tayo bridge. The samurai bridge and i thought to myself that tayo wouldn't have put the bridge on until the last yeah thing so that nobody could do what these guys did but they did it the anyway <laughs> i could just and imagine so like a tug pulling up alongside it because it probably wouldn't have had like proper you know fueling and stuff just like basically latched onto the side and just kind of pulled it away but obviously you know that's that's all head cannon stuff and Starfield, sadly, you can't do that. But let's, uh, we're, we're gonna take her off and see if she performs. Now, given that this is, uh, kind of a, meant to be a, uh, like a kind of a mix between a kind of a crew training vessel and a cargo vessel. Also, I will, uh, I love those engines. They're, like, my favorite engines in the game. Mine, too. They're, like, so nice. And they, I like the fact that they have nice snap points on each side. There's no, like, kind of fiddling with them. Oh, yeah. Top, bottom, and the sides, yep. and the front. And also, I noticed there when it took off, like, it, it looked really cool because you've got those middle kind of sections that are they're close together. So they make it look like you've got your kind of your primary, like, you know, boosters in the middle, and then you've got your secondaries. So if we click, as always, I have a perk that increases my power by five. So for the sake of this review, we're not going to be using five power. But currently, we, we quite have quite a lot of power uh, left over. We've got, like, five, which is quite nice to see if people want to upgrade. Weapon-wise, we've got our particle, primary particle weapon, and then our secondary turrets, you can obviously shoot them. So, base speed of 140, because we're making use of those B-class engines. And then the move speed is probably going to cap out at 500-ish. Yeah, 520. And then quick jump test. Despite it being like a cargo hauler, it's, it's quite agile, which a lot of people quite like. I do, one thing I will say, uh, no, I kind of wish that there was, like, ways you could kind of tweak, uh, you know, like, the kind of how ships handle? Like, if you ever play, mm -hmm. like, a GTA with the aircraft update, you can kind of give them different handling and stuff, because sometimes I'd love to be able to make a ship that handles, like, a, you know, like a bathtub. But I could add more cargo. Well, you could, yeah. <laughs> anyway, we're going to jump to the planet now, and we'll show you how we build it. All right, so here we are. We have the ship broken down. So we've got kind of the main kind of crew section. We've got a Magellan. M Magellan? Which one is it? Oh, God. Is it Magellan? Magellan. 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 Yeah, that's it. I had people trolling me for ages because I was pronouncing that wrong. I didn't realize that was based on a Explorer. The C1X cockpit, Nova Galactic 220 cargo, two crew station. Behind that, we have the Nova Galactic control station 2 by one five uh, hole, four crew station. Uh, we've got the Nova NG2 Docker Top from Nova Galactic. We have a Warden SG-400 shield, SG shield generator from Sexton Shield System. B-Class 10 Power 1125 Shield. Then weapon-wise, we've got two particle beams, two PV-175 Helion beams from Ballistic Solution Incorporate. B-Class 38.99.99 range, 2.5 fire rate, 29 hull and shield damage, 4 power, or 3 power, and they're mounted on some uh, equipment plates from Tayo. And on the back here, we have two PB100 Auto Neutron Turrets, both Exclusion Incorporated. B Class 3899.99 range, 5 power, or 5 fire rate, 16 hull and shield damage, and 3 power. And then for the structural pieces, obviously, we, like I was saying, we have those four equipment plates. We have a Nova Cowling 2 LTM, 
uh, Nova Bracer. And then we have two Nova Radiators this side, split apart and two together. And then the the, the, the second level of the vessel, this is where it kind of starts to get a bit uh, modular, as you could say. So we start off, we've got two of these Dunn 71 engines from Amadon. B-Class, 3 power, 26, 580 engine thrust, 40, 250 maneuvering thrust. And these engines are, I love these engines. I love the kind of the snap points to them. They're just, yeah, they're perfect. And then for the habitat pieces, we have the Tayo Captain's Quarters, 2 by one top B. We have the Nova Galactic Storeroom, 1 by one the Nova Galactic Living Quarters, 2 by one and then another storeroom. And then we've got quite a few structural pieces. So we've got two Nova engine struts. We have one two three four five six of these tile mid caps that are kind of spread out so we've got one two three four six of these nova bracers and then finally we've got two stroud engine mounts now uh no one of the things you were saying before we kind of as we were talking is you kind of envision this ship to be people can expand upon it whatever way they want so like a lot of these pieces can be pulled out like for instance if you want to take out these mid-caps, you can slap on some maybe some actual Tayo Habs. Or if you want to pull out the Nova Galactic Habs and swap them. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I wanted this to be the Build-A-Bear of, of, of spaceships. And it's, it, it definitely is like the, 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 like the size of like kind of uh, empty space currently. You know, space is taken over by either the Habs or the mid-caps or the stuff. Like it's clear you can kind of go with it and go as far as you want. And then obviously we've got the third section. We've got the Nova Galactic Engineering Bay 3x1, the Nova Galactic Infirmary 2x1. We've got two more of those engines, same ones, Amadon 71s. Um, are they, They're meant to be 71s, aren't they? I haven't made them an error, have I? No, no. I, I threw the most powerful engines on there that I, of that class. I feel like it, it's kind of needed, though, because I feel like uh, with how much cargo it's carrying by default, and then the fact that if it was to be fully laden, it'd probably be a lot slower. And then we have quite a few structural pieces. We've got two of these Nova Cowlings, one port, one starboard. Two more of the Stroud engine mounts. We have one, two, three, four, five Nova braces on this side, five on that side. And then we've got two this side and two of this all together. That's 13. And then we have four Tayo side caps on the starboard side and then four on the port side. And they're just kind of broken up so that they, you know, kind of emphasize the fact that it's kind of not fully built. And then we've got two tile braking engines and two shroud braking engines. And then this again, this is kind of what you were saying about how like like this section alone, like you've got a what is that? You've got a one, two, three, four, four by one, two, three, four, five, four by five. You could fit a lot of com like habitats in here if you wanted to. Just off the top yeah. of your head, from like a lower point of view, what way would you see the kind of the captain slowly kind of morphing the ship into? Would they kind of double down on some cargo space, or would they kind of add more crew components? Well, I think the um, the Tayo pieces that are on the higher level, those would be filled out so that it fills that, that both sides out there. So not a lot of expansion on the upper level unless you wanted to replace the Nova Galactic parts. But down below, I, I think he would eventually replace the Nova Galactic parts, or at least stock those parts would be different and they would probably put like the the larger habs like the the, the larger all-in-ones that have the little sleeping quarters off to the side and you know things like that to to fill out that center piece there and uh, really it's kind of up to whoever's building this how they want to put it together just just going by what you were saying about it being a crew trainer if it was up to me one of the things i'd probably do is i you make use of the um is it the two by two tile living quarters just because it's probably one of the nicer living quarters in terms of it has the bunk beds and stuff. So you have mm -hmm. a little bit of kind of space for your crew to kind of, there's some weightlifting and stuff, which I feel like, you know, I when you're training a crew. That in there. It's, it's, I was very tempted to put that in there by default, but you know, I, I kind of really wanted to make it look, grudgy. look more. Yeah. Yeah. Which makes sense. And had ad hoc, you know, nothing real fancy yet. Cause the other thing with this, that kind of, it kind of, uh, brings me hark into uh, in in the expanse um, because there's a lot of modularity with it. You could technically pull off pieces and swap it if you let's say for instance, like there was too many like so let's say you see were aware of the ship's profile. You could okay we're gonna swap the top sections and replace them with uh, more tile or you know some shroud, which I'm not sure if that's something you like initially had thought about, but it's 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 something that I kind of see 
and I think it kind of showcases like the point you were trying to make with with this ship. You kind of want people to kind of evolve it how they want to. Absolutely. And then if we we look at the bottom section here, we have the Nova Galactic All in One Birth Two by One B. We have the NG Six Landing Bay for Nova Galactic. We have one, two, three, four, six, seven, eight Accu Lander Eleven landing gear from Strat Eklund. They give two thrusts each. We've got uh, two of the 500T Helium-3 tanks from Ballistic Solutions, 210 each. We got uh, the 104DS Mag Inertial React from Dogstar, B-Class, 39 power, 1125 Hull. And we have the Aurora 13G Grav Drive from Deepcore, B-Class, 10 power, 33 jump thrusts, which gives us 23, the current config. And then we've got one, two, three, four of the Galleon S202 cargo holds, 950 each, which gives us just under 4,000. I think with the with the combined cockpit we get four thousand and twenty, and then structural pieces we've got two of these Nova bracers and two of these Deimos belly pieces aft. So we strap the ship back together. So yeah, is there anything a final words you want to say on the the vessel, Nova? I'm just reiterating the the points that you know when I build these ships, I, I build them so that if anybody else wants to build them. There's a lot of expandability to it. You know, you can take it apart, put it together. Think of it as like your own little Lego set. Going by the the, the way you kind of do the constructions, it does definitely feel like that. Very easy to follow. But yeah, so that was the uh, that was the, the Sleepy Shepherd. Um, look forward to next. I believe next you have another B class currently, don't you? I believe so. Yes. And then I, I think, think it's on the sword to the C. Yeah. So. Next week, we're going to be looking at a, a ship that is designed specifically for combat, whereas these ones have kind of... They can do combat, but a lot of them, it's not their initial intentions, so look forward to that. As always, Nogroth, I thank you for letting me review your ships and kind of use them in my content, and thank you for joining me. I appreciate you having me here. And then also, before you go, if you want to shout out your blog, we'll also put a link sure. in there. Yeah, sure, I could do that. That's stupid-fat-fingers at... Uh, I'm sorry, dot blogspot.com. And I would recommend checking it out. He obviously has these ships that are designed really well and, you know, like it shows you the build it, but he's got a ton more ships and they fit really well into the universe. Like if, if we ever do get like a, a mod where we can kind of insert our own ships, I would 100% recommend adding in all of the ships because they just fit perfectly. So yeah, as always, guys, uh, thanks for watching and catch you in the next one.